Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Professor B. Hariharan from the Institute of English, University of Kerala. Now we will be looking at James Joyce's collection of short stories titled Dubliners. So I hope we are all set to walk along the streets of Dublin. In the first, in the slide that you look at, you will see uh, an image, uh, uh, a statue of Joyce actually walking the streets, walking down the streets of Dublin. That in a way would set the tone for this journey that we will take with Joyce in Dublin. Let's begin. James Joyce was born in 1882. He passed away in 1941. He was born in Dublin, in Ireland. James Joyce is a writer of great importance in the 20th century and he is known as one of the champions of the modernist movement in literature. The first major work that Joyce published is Dubliners. Now, this book was published in 1914. I hope we all would remember the political significance of the year 1914. Now, this book is a collection, as I said earlier, about life in Dublin. This is a collection that addresses at least six to seven major themes. If you look at the, the visuals, you will find that we have tried to provide you an illustrated, the cover at least of the illustrated edition of this first edition. The major themes that Joyce tries to address, tries to discuss in this collection of short stories includes paralysis, isolation, poverty, longing for escape, religion, epiphany. Now, let's look at some of these things. We will look at uh, poverty, think of religion, think of epiphany. Now, these are things that kind of recur in, in Joyce, particularly religion and epiphany. Now, these stories center on or center in Joyce's ideas of an epiphany. We know that epiphany is a religiously loaded term. Now, what Joyce does is to adapt it to suit his narrative purposes. And therefore, for Joyce, epiphany is a moment where a character experiences a life-changing self-understanding or illumination. Or to put it very simply, epiphany is a moment of illumination for a character. I think that would be the, the best the simplest way in which one can understand epiphany. Now, the other thing why we need to look at a book like, a collection like Dubliners is that many of the characters that we have in Dubliners, they later appear as minor characters in Joyce's classic novel, Ulysses. Now, this is the reason why it is important to have an acquaintance with a book like Dubliners. Now, the initial stories in this collection are narrated by child protagonists. And these stories continue, they develop and they deal with the lives and concerns of older people. Now, um, these stories can be divided uh, into, let's say, three. One can think of a tripartite division, if, if, as it were. Now, into childhood, adolescence, and maturity. Now, this is something that needs to be emphasized here. Childhood, 
adolescence and maturity now this is a collection that has 15 stories 14 plus 1 collection now let us look at uh, we talked about the division now let us look at these three categories and then try this is a collection that addresses at least six to seven major themes if you look at the the visuals you will find that we have tried to provide you an illustrated the cover at least of the illustrated edition of this first edition the major themes that joyce tries to address tries to discuss in this collection and identify the stories that come under each group now when you look at childhood there are at least three stories that can uh, that come under childhood they are the sisters the second one is an encounter the third arabi that is childhood adolescence when you look at the second dominant theme there are at least there are four stories there Evelyn, two gallons after the race and the boarding house if you look at mature life grown up a little cloud clay counterparts and the last one a painful case the last group as it were which talks about the public life the fourth category if you want grace that's the first one the second story is iv day in the committee room the last story a mother now these are the footing and there is one story which you cannot categorize under these four different heads and that story is titled the dead these are the 15 stories now why what what was joyce's purpose intention as it were to write this collection now in joyce's own words what is it joyce said my intention was to write a chapter of the moral history of my country and i chose dublin for the scene because that city seemed to me the center of paralysis now let me break what joyce has to say here now we had mentioned one major theme in these stories as paralysis now we know why this appears as a major theme why paralysis is a major theme in this collection because when we talk about paralysis joyce certainly was talking about the political paralysis in ireland now that takes you to the political climate in ireland when joyce was writing this now we need to go back we just need to go back and read recall our wb yates to understand this there is another text in joyce which also does talk about irish politics and that novel is the portrait of the artist as a young man now to return to what joyce had to say he said that i have tried to present it this collection i have tried to present it to the look at this coin this 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 phrase that he uses indifferent public i have tried to present it to the indifferent public under four of its aspects now that is what we were talking about childhood adolescence maturity and public life now this fourfold categorization was something that joyce gave now this is not what critics have given and he continues these stories are arranged in this order i have written it for the most part in a style of scrupulous meanness and with the conviction that he is a very bold man who dares to alter in the presentment still more to deform whatever he has seen and heard now this is what joyce says now the important thing here the the emphasis 
should be there on uh, the choice of words a, the, a bold man who dares to alter and then still more to deform whatever he has seen and heard now this is the intent this is the purpose that joyce had now what it tells you is about joyce the storyteller now this is probably where we would uh, try to read joyce as an avant-garde writer someone who tried to break free now for joyce dublin in a way was paradox or he was living in at times where there were a whole lot of contradictions look at joyce he was born in dublin but then a person who was so much who 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 so much loved his country he so much loved ireland and the city that he writes this collection he bases all his stories in and around dublin but then look what he did he abandoned his native land his culture and religion for the rest of his life he wrote about dublin and nothing else now that probably is one big paradox that will confront you when you try to read your joys now i think it's important that we know a little bit about the publication history of this book now it was written in 1905 it was published only in 1914 now why did this happen remember that dublin was a happening place in these these stories refer to a whole lot of people a whole lot of places and if the story was published the moment as soon as it was written it would have been possible to recognize places and people now the other reason was that the language and the material used now there could have been perhaps even objections about the treatment of uh, someone like edward the second in this short story called ivy day now very interestingly this book was published after the success of a portrait of the artist as a young man now this collection was published after the publication of this novel and the reputation that joyce had as a storyteller now let us turn our attention to uh, perhaps at this point to the form of the short story what are the features that we can think of of a short story now i think that's very it's that is very important now um let's say we can let us say we will identify at least six basic features brevity you might want to you can tell a story in perhaps a paragraph or it can go up to maybe 70 60 to 70 pages you might be able to tell a story in as i said one paragraph perhaps even a sentence now that's so much of brevity now story short stories normally would have would revolve around one theme you will not have too many characters the characters will be limited and then it will have images and it will strike the reader and the images will be always very very striking there will be this this immediacy of images there will be a kind of unity of one can claim one can argue that there there will be this unity of time place and action now the other remarkable thing when we look at uh, short stories is that we talked about brevity now with brevity would come economy in the sense that the language used will be very very precise it will be concise now the last feature that we try to identify homogeneity when we talk about homogeneity in spite of all this these stories a short story is a complete unified whole if we keep this in mind and approach any short story i think it will help you 
get a hold on it. Now, why short stories? Let's very briefly look at some practitioners of this form. Right? Now, you have the European tradition. Look at the names that come to your mind. Guy de Maupassant, Anton Chekhov, Oscar Wilde. And you have the Gaelic groups with which perhaps certainly Joyce was familiar with. And then, now the short story as a form helps you to give expression to the voice of submerged groups. This is a form that reaches far and wide. So you don't require a lot of time to read short stories. Now, you would have short, sto short stories are published in many magazines and newspapers. So there is this accessibility, there is this reach. And that is the reason why, why we think it's important that we must pay attention to short stories as we do the novels. Now, to return to Joyce's collection. Now, all these stories, all the 15 stories in Joyce, they present flat portraits. We talk about flat characters and round characters, but they're all, these, the characters, the, these portraits that you have in Joyce, they're all flat. Now, each story in Joyce, in this collection, is centered around an epiphany. Each story is concerned with, it could be a failure, it could be a deception, it would result in disillusionment, or it could result in realization. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to talk about the summary of every story. Now, that can be boring. So I would invite all of you as we listen to this to go and look at the text and read these stories to see if there are these concerns here. If, if, it, if it has these, class, if we can really do this classification, see if there is, it's possible to justify this. See if you can identify more themes, much more than the themes that I have tried to identify here. Right now, let us look at some of the themes that Joyce uh, develops in these stories. Now, let's try to identify some of these themes. We had talked about Irish politics, the autobiographical element, religion, relationship between men and women. Epiphany, of course, is there. We talked about paralysis. When you talk about paralysis, we will have to talk about when will there be paralysis, when there is decay, when there is escape, when you are not able to confront something, when you run away. Corruption, that's the theme. When we talk about corruption, there can be different types, different kinds of corruption. Death. In other words, if you pool, put all these themes together, What is it that you get? It's a very bleak picture that you get. A bleak picture of the homeland and its inhabitants. Right? Now, what I would do is I would want to go and look in some detail at the politics in England before we look at the style that Joyce uses in these stories. What is it that marks the style in Joyce? Obviously, symbolism. But then it's not just symbolism. You would find a lot of symbolism in the other Joyce narratives. Realism is there. And then, there's one thing that many critics have identified. Now, when we talk about symbolism, it's fascinating to read the stories, to look at the way in which Joyce uses colors. Each color signifying or representing something. This is something that when we do a careful reading of Joyce's stories, we understand.
now what about the way in which he describes presents characters characters are described through introspection rather than description now this is very important when we say that his characters are described through introspection that really gives you um, a method or this tells you how to read the joys of ulysses or portrait of the artist as a young man what i'm trying to say is that this technique is what takes you straight away to the stream of consciousness method or mode of narration what you also have here is this remarkable preoccupation with time what you have in dubliners is a subjective perception of time which you do have in his novels you have in joyce's stories an omniscient narrator and what happens there is that the single point of view disappears things begin in the middle of things characters are vividly painted if you want to say uh, something about characterization now what about the artist the person the artist figure in these stories the artist is invisible now the artist figure is independent from all moral religious political pressures the artist for him is isolated from society so that he or she is objective to give a true image of it we just need to recall here the uh, the the ending of the portrait of the artist as a young man it was for this reason that joyce chose to be an exile but there's something else that we need to be saying here about the artist figure now much of what joyce uh, was trying to do and think about art about the role of the artist and the function of art i think it goes back in a way as a kind of a response to the art for art sake movement um we had it's in this context let's say that we need to be looking at the use to which joyce put epiphany we have talked about epiphany so i'm not going to repeat what epiphany means now using it in his narrative what joyce was trying to do uh by introducing an invisible artist figure using uh, epiphany etc what he was trying to do was he was trying to aim at a style of scrupulous meanness this is something that we had seen now what it implies is that he rejected a complicated plot he eliminated all superfluous details now this is uh, what gave him the form of the short story i talked about i referred to the colors that he uses now the colors that he uses are indicative of the kind of atmosphere in which these stories emerge evolve atmosphere of paralysis decay now there are color combinations that he he has now if you if he when he was trying to indicate Uh, paralysis or decay the color that he used was brown and yellow sometimes green he would also pay attention to the the eyes of the characters to indicate their personality so there were things that he was trying to do here that really marked off uh, the way in which he was telling these stories the use of linguistic registers reflecting the social situation and psychological state now this is something that he takes up for greater elaboration in the novels that he wrote now the other thing is that uh, i think we need to here return to the uh, paradoxes here here you have a writer who was uh, so much rooted in a way in ireland and yet chose to be an exile it was self imposed now what joyce perhaps was doing in that moment of exile was to get the objectivity that he thought he would get 
to write about Ireland with a detachment. Now, this is the reason why he seemed to have imposed this exile on himself. We talked about the way in which uh, Joyce uh, used, he did not rely, for example, on the descriptive mode, rather he used the mode of introspection. Now, we had said this. Now, what he was trying to do there was not to create a make-believe world, but then his stories try to tell the readers how to perceive reality differently. For this, it is for this reason that we would say that for Joyce, all art is impersonal. Joyce remains always outside the tales in Dubliners. He doesn't seem to be giving himself an authorial voice that intervenes, even though he would be using an omniscient narrator, an all-knowing narrator. The style in this book is pretty complex. Now, we said that it is realistic. We said there is a symbolic dimension here. It is realistic. What it does is it recreates characters, places, streets, etc. of contemporary Dublin. Dublin. At the same time, it is symbolic. Because with the kind of symbolism that you have in Joyce, there is something that you achieve, you get there. Symbolism in Joyce gives depth and so with this depth you are able to perceive or you become aware of the kind of reality that the text is trying to reveal to you the the, the short story is uh, is a form that's very popular or that is a national tradition in Ireland now during Halloween every year uh, storytellers were the very soul of the Sealy. Now, uh, storytellers would gather around the fireplace. Uh, they would gather around discos, they would gather around nightclubs, and they would be telling stories. This is a very common feature. Now, there used to be dances. And uh, there, ha with the changing times, there have been modifications made to this tradition. Now, this is probably what marks it slightly different from the other model that we had. Now, we had talked about uh, half a dozen themes. Now, I think we should be looking at the way in which, I had also indicated this, we need to be looking at the way in which some of these themes are all interlinked. Paralysis. There are two sides to it. There is physical paralysis and there is moral paralysis. When you talk about the physical one, it has to do with external forces. When you talk about the moral paralysis, you are looking at the political, religion, re religious and the cultural dimension now. Now, when you look at the stories, the three stories that you have uh, with this theme, when you look at the climax of these stories, what you have is not paralysis, it's revelation. Now, from here, the, the other uh, the way in which paralysis kind of leads to the other themes is also equally interesting. Paralysis leads to the other theme, decay. Now, things that don't move, things that are immobile, they will erode. Now, this is not something at the level of characters. Now, th alone, this is something that touches the nation as well. In a way, it's related to Ireland also. The opposite of paralysis would be escape. Now, why is it that one would talk about escape? Escape from what? What would be the cause for this escape? It could be, in one word, the sense of enclosure. To be free. And then, this fear, as it were, of failure. What about religion? Now, Ireland is Catholic. Religion is seen as a negative, as an oppressive force. It's seen 
it is almost equated to the negative authority of English rule. A collection like Dubliners is filled with details about, of, of uh, the church, the religious practices and traditions, the buildings, to references to catechism, the attitude, religious attitude, etc. In other words, it tries to tell you about this, this very big hold that religion had on a people. The other thing, the, we talked about the political dimension. Joyce did not take an active part in politics. But then, he did not approve the Irish Ireland. He did not approve the Irish literary revival, very interestingly. This was not a solution for him. He did not support British rule in Ireland. This is very interesting when you look at Joyce. Suffering is a very major theme in Joyce. Women, the suffering that women uh, had to undergo, the questions of equality, these were things that concerned him. Are women equal to men? This is a question that Joyce seemed to be asking in this connection. There's a very interesting structuring of all these stories. The first story begins with a death and then the collection ends with a story titled The Dead. It might be possible to conclude by saying that we have this variety of stories that create a web of place, time and meaning. These stories gain momentum and weight by, by virtue of following those that came before. After reading the book, it will be hard to think of one Dubliner's tale without remembering others. Hope you enjoy reading Dubliners. Thank you.